Did you know that if you peeled off the gold from Balthazar Gelt's face, you would in fact reveal Napoleon Bonaparte under there? And I know, I know, it's fairly obvious. They both have the same circumference headwear. That's concrete evidence of them being the same person if ever I've seen it. So come with me now as we play a Gelt campaign as his true form with nothing but guns, cavalry and cannons, as well as using a few Napoleonic tactics along the way. Now the first order of business is to get rid of all those units that don't fit the bill. We only want gunpowder units, whether that's infantry, cavalry or artillery. This does mean we're going to be stuck with limited options for a while as the only gunpowder unit we can get right now is free company militia. So they'll have to do until we get some handgunners and some cavalry. So I recruit myself a few of those and then head on to attack the first enemy settlement, but it's not looking so good. So I decide to fall back for now and recruit a few more free company boys. But the gobbos have got other ideas as they come after me, so I'm forced to fight this. Now I don't know if you know, Balthazar Gelt, just like Napoleon, starts with the Searing Doom spell. And I'm going to allow myself to use this because Napoleon himself was actually an artilleryman and Searing Doom is a bombardment, so it's kind of like artillery. So it's fair, I think. Otherwise, we're just going to have Gelt sat around most of the time. But here I'm able to get things done with a little bit of firepower, a little bit of good use of the artillery, the Searing Doom. Very nice. So I took my victory, fell back, recruited a bunch more boys, and then tried to get an ambush because the Black Venom boys now had two armies. And I managed to get an ambush on the smaller one here, so I can easily take that out with a decisive victory, meaning I can hopefully now push on the settlement and take it because, goddammit, I need to. Now, I couldn't get the auto-resolve win there, but I did have another army with a few more free company boys in, but it's still not enough. A valiant defeat. So I'm going to have to fight this. I check out what terrain it is to make sure it's not actually a minor settlement. It's not. It's an open field. But I will encircle them first to see if I can wear them down before attacking them. But they're not having any of it and they're coming out to get us. I'm well aware though that I am outnumbered in this situation and with the strength of my army being missiles and the chance of them being able to just get into us and not letting us use our missiles, that could be pretty bad. But I notice here I've got a little hill I can work with behind a lake and I try to layer my troops so that they can all shoot over the top of each other and at least most of them will still be able to remain firing while the front ones are stuck in melee. Now to be clear, this was not a Napoleonic tactic. The last thing you want with line infantry is them all shooting over each other's heads because that doesn't really work. And with how inaccurate weapons were back then, like muskets, having someone stood 20 meters behind you trying to fire over your head, that is definitely not something you want with an inaccurate weapon. But by Sigmar, it was working sweet here as all the free company boys were able to blast away at all these little gobbos before they reached us. Our boy Napoleon Giltapart was dropping his bombardments. But all in all, this strategy worked very damn well. Our artillery did some good work as well on the blobs of infantry. But the real MVP here was the terrain that allowed us to pull off this setup, keeping most of our guns firing most of the time. With that, we took the W and took our first settlement, completing our first province. But now I entered a period of having to wait around for a while because I wanted to get my settlement to tier 3 so that I could get handgunners and cavalry. Along the way here though, Scrag declares war on me and Karak Hearn declares war on me for some reason. Now while I didn't see Scrag at all in this campaign, Karak Hearn did have a little go with me at first. I tried to set a little ambush for them, which didn't work, but I was able to auto-resolve a Pyrrhic victory, which saved me having to fight goddamn dwarfs. So I took that, and then they realized who the hell they were messing with and decided to ask for peace. Now rolling on to turn 26 here, and I'm finally able to construct the building for handgunners so we can get a real army on the go. I also start to recruit cavalry soon as well. And after a lot more waiting around, we move on to turn 47, where I've now got myself a big Napoleon-style army. I've got loads of handgunners, got some Empire Knights, got a bit of skirmish cav, and of course, my artillery. And obviously, this whole time, I've been putting skill points into buffing up all those things as well. Now I just needed an enemy to go after, and of course, the vampires are becoming a problem, as they do in every Empire campaign. But I do notice that they have a hell of a lot of armies over near this kind of western side of their kingdom. So I decide to go deep into their territory before I'm at war with them to try and strike them at the heart, to get at their starting settlements. Because the AI tends to never defend these settlements that are kind of deep into its kingdom. So pro tip, if you want to take out a large AI empire, just go past their front line, past where all their armies are, and there'll probably be a load of undefended settlements. As I start to approach Castle Drakenhof though, Vlad realizes that I might be up to no good and he declares war on me, but it's too late for him. I'm about ready to roll, so we besiege Drakenhof. They try to raise a little army there, but too little too late. However, they do have a lot of grave guards, so I can't get any kind of auto-resolve victory. I'm going to try and wear them down, but there's a good chance they'll come out to fight me because they are predicted to win. And that they indeed do, but luckily it's on a nice big flat map, so I figure this could be my chance to pull off some proper Napoleon-style tactics. 
So I've got myself a nice long line of line infantry. I've got cavalry there to support. My artillery is at the back. Normally, I think with Napoleon armies, it might be at the front. I'm not sure. If you're a Napoleon historian, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff I do say. Unless you're going to try and convince me of something stupid like Napoleon not knowing Searing Doom. Because, you know, we've all seen his TikToks. Anyway, another thing a Napoleonic army might use is skirmishers that just kind of harass the enemy before the line infantry really gets involved. And I'm using skirmish cav to do that here as I don't have any skirmish infantry and I'm using them to lure the enemies into my guns basically. And this is a great way to get rid of some of these strong units early against the vampire counts is working well here getting rid of this Vargolf. And I'm not sure Napoleon armies used a lot of missile ranged cav. I think there maybe was some but it's mostly melee cav which came in after units were softened up by the line infantry. Like here, I've just injured these Crypt Ghouls to half health, and then I bring in the big Cav Charge to finish them off. Very nice. And while these tactics worked pretty well early on in the battle, wearing things down with my guns and my artillery and using Cav Charges to take things out and slow things down, there was the rather large problem that, well, Graveguard have silver shields, and those waste a lot of our ammo and mean we can't really hurt them that much before they reach us, and, well, what the handguns do once they get into melee, well, they die, so... This army was only really effective for the first half of the battle before they were in melee, then it was a problem. And of course I saw this coming, using handgunners as a front line was never really going to work terribly well, but I was able to angle myself enough and to get behind the shields in a lot of cases and take out the Graveguard using that skirmish cab as well. They provided some good ways to get ammo into things, and I was ultimately able to get that victory, albeit a very, very Pyrrhic one. Now I chose to sack the settlement here for 16 grand as I was very tight on money around this time because my army is very expensive. But I now had a nice shiny new 10 slotter settlement. Of course my original kingdom is a bit in danger of being taken out but as you can see I've drawn some vampire armies back here because they're now worried about me taking all their stuff. So they're pulling some of their armies back to come and defend the rest of Sylvania. But I'm going to start pushing towards Castle Templehof, coming into a few battles along the way. This one pretty much the same as the last one, to be honest. I didn't have so many Graveguard to deal with, so it went a bit better, but still pretty much the same thing. Started off well early, took out some strong units early, and then it became a bit messy towards the end. And then there was this battle, which is pretty much the battle for Templehof itself as the army came out to fight me. As you can see though, I've got a big hill position. I'm using the line thing that I did earlier where I'm shooting over the heads of other guys, which is like I say, not very Napoleonic, but it works in this case. And a similar situation with this battle as well. Started off well early, worked a little bit better because of the layers, but ultimately things started to rout and run away and then it just got messy, but still able to get the victory. That gave us Castle Templehof, so two big settlements in the Sylvania area. Nice. I then proceeded on to take the other two settlements in the region, which were both undefended, so nice easy takes, Eschen and Schwarzhofen. I just needed to clear away all that nasty vampire corruption around. I then looked to get after the Moot, because that's a single settlement province. There was a small army there, but of course it was Vlad's army himself, and Vlad is pretty much an army by himself, so there's basically three armies here. I besieged this anyway, and Vlad the Dad came out to get me. And this was looking like a bit of a tough fight. A couple of terror geists in there, some cavalry, some grave guard. And let me tell you, this was probably the closest worst fight of them all. It was pretty horrible. But I tried to use all of the best Napoleon skills I could think of. And if you read any book about Napoleon, you'll quickly learn that he was a very skilled pyromancer. With his favorite spell being fireball. So I was sure to use that. And I tried to use some other Napoleonic tactics, this time using columns at the edges to try and protect the flanks a little bit, but I don't really know why because the flanks weren't really the problem, it was the front line instantly breaking that was the problem. I thought about maybe using Free Company Militia as a front line and then having handgunners more towards the back, because Free Company are much better in a melee fight, they'd last longer as a front line, but they lack the firepower that I'm really looking for, they don't have armor piercing missiles, they've got shorter range. So I'm sticking with the handgunner game, and as you can see here at this battle, it's come down to the wire. I've got but a few handgunners left, and just Vlad is pretty much able to take out all this stuff unless I can blast him down. But luckily, I have my units spread out enough, and we can take him down and get the W, even though it's incredibly goddamn close. Luckily, most of my army just got scared off rather than killed, so I haven't actually lost as much as it looks like. But we've gained some good ground here, taking out a lot of vampire stuff. But with that battle, I realized I simply don't have enough firepower. I need more. So I recruited myself a second army, but I was going to make it all go around as one army. I recruited a few more explosive units, artillery, a few more handgunners. Going to get some grenade launchers as well, because Napoleon did have grenadiers, although maybe not on horseback, but close enough. While I was recruiting that army, Gelt went and finished off some nearby vampire settlements to tidy up the place. And then came the combining of my two armies to create the mega army. One army was going to be full of the handgunners and artillery, the other of all the cavalry and mobile units. 
I used my newfound mega army to besiege Averheim, which came with a decisive victory to claim a nice spot between my two main areas. The Skaven also came along as Ickit had declared war on me for no real reason and attacked Fort Sol, one of my starting settlements. I had to fight it, but we got the job done. No bother. Now at this point I had a confederation offer from Talabekland and I've had a few of these but I always turn them down unless I have the three imperial authority to actually do them without having any negative effects. So I've done that now, it's increased my kingdom just a little bit, a couple of settlements. I figured because I'm a little bit behind from waiting around for the handgunners that I could do with a little boost to my kingdom. So I gained three settlements from this but of course it came with the massive upkeep costs of the armies that they had so I had to get rid of a bunch of those. I left one of them up there because it kind of seemed like I needed something to defend the farthest north settlement. But I had the vampires on their last legs as they were running out of settlements quickly. Although they were still a threat, they did have some big armies around and they came and took one of my settlements, my new ones. And then as if things couldn't get any worse, some elves tried to befriend me. Blech. Obviously, I turned them down, spat on them and sent them packing. From here though, I came to exact my revenge on Vlad who had taken my settlement and came into a big fight, two armies, one and a half stacks each. He's got some tough units in there, Terrorgeists, Blood Knights, Graveguard, even got some missiles. I was going to need some special Napoleonic tactics for this one. Enter the infantry square, the box formation. This is 100% definitely, absolutely not a good idea, but I'm going to give it a damn good go and we'll see how it goes. I've tried to get as much firepower facing forwards. Even the side units are facing forward. I'm going to get the back units facing forward. The front units are obviously facing forward. So as much firepower forward as possible. I've got some units inside the square. I've got my artillery inside the square. I'm just waiting for my cavalry to arrive to protect the flanks a little bit. And God knows I'm going to need it. Now, box formations are nothing new in Total War Warhammer. The dwarves are very good at them. The Empire are not. So we're going to see how this goes. Handgunners as your boxing protecting front line. It's a recipe for disaster, but if we can keep the firepower up, if we can hurt things before they reach us enough, we might be able to hold them off. I've got my skirmish cab out front, we're going to try and do some damage and distract and pull things around with those, and that works quite nicely, that always helps. I get some of the silly heroes flying in by themselves, which means they get absolutely destroyed, like so. Uh, this one just happened to be Isabella von Karstein, so Vlad's going to be pissed, but hey, at least she's off the field. I've got my grenade launchers here as well with some cavalry and my cavalry is going to be very important for trying to keep things from getting into the box so that it can maintain maximum firepower as much as possible and that's definitely going to help us get the win. Vargeist, Crypt Horrors, Terrorgeist coming in but they're all getting massively blasted before they arrive. I've got one of my heroes out front absorbing some punishment as well. One of the black coaches did get into us and disrupt us a little bit. There's some stuff coming around the flanks. The two Blood Knights, Terrorgeist coming in. Those are going to be tough to stop. We're going to try and blast them down as quickly as possible. But as you can see, a lot of units are kind of pouring in slowly because the bigger army was the reinforcing army, which meant we've got more time to just dismantle things as they feed it to us. They should really be attacking us all at once. If they did, we'd be screwed. But luckily, they're coming in a little bit at a time, so we're able to gun things down nice. Now my Empire Knight's getting into the Blood Knights, but that's obviously a fight my boys are going to lose, so I get them some support from these Outriders with their armor-piercing missiles. And I also have some War Wagons with mortars going around with my cavalry, because that was a thing in Napoleonic armies. You'd have kind of cavalry followed around and supported by artillery. Although I don't think mortars were generally used very much in field battles by Napoleonic armies. They were more of a siege thing. I'd love to be able to get the Regiment of Renowned Black Lion unit, which has the Hellblaster in it for this, but I haven't unlocked it yet. Either way, I use my war wagons here to lure the cavalry in front of my missiles at the back here so they're able to be blasted down and finished off. As was most of this army. None of the infantry was really able to reach us. The only thing that got to us was a terrorgeist and a black coach that got inside the box for a little bit, but they got sorted out. Infantry never got close. Vlad got blasted down. And what do you know? My infantry square with my extra firepower. I got a hellstorm in there now. Got the extra cannons, extra handgunners. It got the job done well. Now at this point things are looking pretty tidy, I've got this front line against the vampires, they've only got a handful of settlements left, and they've just lost their big bad army, so I'm going to sweep in, reclaim Krugenheim that they took from me just now, and then move on to Wurtbad, a nice big city, but out of nowhere, oh scheiße! Festus is coming after me, he declared war on me, came after Talapheim, I've got a bit of an army there, it's a decisive defeat though, he's got two big armies, I'm just going to let him take it so they can have a big fight with his big armies and we can test ourselves against a different faction because we've been fighting vampires pretty much this whole time. So I abandon trying to take them out for now and head north to take on Festus, I set up an ambush and we get him. The trouble is we can't really take advantage of the ambush that well because if our handgunners stand near to them they're going to come after us and they're going to beat the crap out of us in melee so it's an awkward spot. I decide to go for just a damage victory, shall we say. I'm going to let them mostly escape, but I'll be blowing the fucking bejesus out of them as they run past. 
So in theory, I can do lots of damage to them, and then that army will retreat after this battle, fairly beaten up, and then I'll run up on them and finish them off. That's the plan, not in a hurry to take the army out. And obviously, that works pretty well. They're all lined up very nicely for my Hellstorm rocket battery. My cannons are flying in there. Some of the units do attempt to come up the hill, and of course, they get blasted to absolute scheisse. A couple of their units did reach us, but nothing major happened. We got rid of a lot of their units, did a lot of damage to a lot of their army. And although some units did escape pretty much unscathed, we did get rid of their plague bearers, their forsaken, a couple of their heroes. So that plan worked out very well, and then I'm going to go on to finish that army off and get rid of it. And Festus is actually in kind of a bad way. A lot of the settlements in his kind of area are taken out. I think the Beastmen may have had a hand in that. But I tracked down the big man himself, Festus, besieging an Osterland place here. So I'm going to go after him. I'm going to chase him off. He's going to escape for now. But we shall pursue him, eventually catch up to him, and get ourselves a battle that I could easily auto-resolve. But I want to fight Festus, mess around with it a bit. I've got some help from Osterland as well. I did make a bit of a boo-boo, though, as I ended up with my artillery all alone. I thought they'd be able to hide behind the brow of this hill, but apparently they can still be seen somehow, so they form their army up and start marching towards it. But what I was trying to do was set up all my missile infantry to be able to take this hill. And I want to get that terrain advantage, get a nice long line of handgunners just blasting everything that comes up the hill. Luckily, they do decide to come after it rather than going after my artillery. I do send over some cav to support my artillery a bit later, but most of it comes up the hill, gets blasted in the face, and we're able to fend them off pretty well. And I'm learning with this kind of play style and this army that I really need to make good use of terrain. That's been the key in a lot of my victories and taking the high ground. Although taking the high ground isn't something you really want to do in a Napoleon era battle. When your enemy's got cannons, you don't really want to make yourself easily visible on the slope of a hill. You might want to be right at the top where you can kind of use the brow of the hill. But anyway, in this case, Festus and his boys, no match for old Baltholian Geltapart, although apparently he did manage to leave us with herpes. And we got word that apparently there was a cure for herpes at Brass Keep, so I went on to take that and find that cure for my boys. Festus then went on and pleaded for peace, so I gave that to him so I could go back and finish off those damn dirty vampires. Now, last time I saw the vampires, they had but one settlement left in Nuln, and now they have two. So they're making their way back up again. We gotta knock them down before they do. And the perfect opportunity arises. Vlad has got a big army at one of his settlements. We're gonna attack it. We're gonna fight him. We're gonna fight the garrison. He's got a hell of a lot of crypt horrors. He's got Vargolf. He's got a lot of stuff that's gonna be a trouble for us if we can't stop it, especially if those crypt horrors get a hold of our handgunners. We're screwed. So, what a perfect final test for our Napoleonic army. Now, our cavalry army arrived first, and luckily, nobody told the vampires that there's not really much advantage to sitting on a hill unless you have the ranged advantage, which gave me time for my main army to arrive and set up a nice formation. Now, what I tried to do here was a little bit outside the box, compared to last time where we were quite literally inside the box. Now, what I've got here is a kind of chevron formation. I thought I need a way for all my handgunners to keep firing as much as possible. So what I did is I had the Sterling's Revenge at the front. They're a little bit better in melee. They hold a little bit better. And then all the handgunners are staggered behind and can, in theory, defend the unit in front of them. And everyone can do this. And hopefully everyone can stay covered. Those Crypt Horrors will tower above my infantry and we'll still be able to shoot them, hopefully from everywhere. That's the plan. So I set up, I get my artillery ready to go, and the fire commences, raining down on the vampires, doing what damage we can to what infantry they have, setting my cannons to try and blast down the crypt horrors as much as I can before they arrive. The stupid old lord comes charging in as well, but that big bastard has a 55% missile resistance, so he's a tough boy for us to wear down by our conventional means. I've had my cavalry skirmishing and harassing as much as possible. I'm getting some cav charges in on the flanks there. Just trying to get maximum damage into all the dangerous units that are approaching us. The Crypt Horrors, the Vargolf, the flying units. Luckily, Vargolfs especially are as squishy as they come, so we're able to get rid of that very quickly. They've only got the one of those. Crypt Horrors start to arrive, though, about to get into melee. Cannons and missiles aiming at them as much as possible. And you see they're getting into one of the units of handgunners, but the other three or four behind them are able to defend them and start blasting at those Crypt Horrors before they can do too much damage. So that's the plan. That's what I was trying to do, and it seems to be working relatively well. Getting my artillery, landing on some of these Crypt Horrors here. The Lord's coming in, but he's trying to get after old Belthazar, but he's going down in a second. Some zombie infantry starts to arrive, but that's not too much of a worry. That's one of the few units the handgunners might actually be able to fight off. I'm using my cavalry just to tie up all the units over here, just to keep them away from my handgunners for now. Again, just to buy more time for the handgunners. I've got some of them aiming over here, trying to wear this stuff down before it gets anywhere near my precious, precious handgunners. And what do you know, this formation actually worked incredibly well, to be honest. Much better than I expected. And the last few battles, the enemy armies have kind of been fed to me, so it's been kind of easy, like with the box formation. But when the entire enemy army comes at you at once, like here, it's generally much harder, as it was in the first few battles of this campaign. But here, it was much, much easier. So this formation seemed pretty damn powerful, and I wish I'd tried it sooner. 
and this wasn't a Napoleon formation or anything, just me trying stuff out. But there we go, the vampire's pretty much taken care of. I still need to go and do Noln, but that's going to be an easy auto-resolve battle probably, because I've just taken out their big army. But there we go, Napoleon armies and Napoleon-style tactics work pretty well in Total War Warhammer, although it does require use of good formations and good terrain, it seems. But here it is, our large kingdom that we've acquired this way. We've got plenty of money, plenty of income. No doubt we'd be able to finish this campaign off. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. And if you want more of this kind of stuff, hey, here's Carl Friends thinking that he's Chengis Khan. I'll see you in the future.